Okay, <clears throat> this is a short video uh, just showing the RGB mod for the Nintendo 64. Um, now the Nintendo that I have here um, is the right model. Uh, if you look at the uh, serial number, it has to be NS1000 whatever. Um, in between NS10 and NS16. So if the numbers start with NS10 <clears throat> all the way to NS16, I think there's some other ones too that might be, but those are the ones that you'll know, you know for sure, it has the, uh, the chip that you can actually uh, modify it with. Um, the... reason is it doesn't have the right chip if you get the other ones and then you're in trouble. Um, so luckily when I went to the uh, used game shop they had the actual serial numbers on the barcode stickers for it which was kind of nice so I didn't have to bother the guy and let him ask him to look through serial numbers. Um, so that's the one mod that um, I will put a link to the site as to how to do that. Basically as you can see there there's uh, three points on this side of the board for R, G, and B. Um, and actually, you can actually solder it to that chip itself, which is right here. And it actually says, uh, yeah, PDC at US. Um, but it's easier, I think, if you can just solder to these uh, via holes and I've got some glue just to hold it down because uh, just moving it around I kind of uh, easily break the connection there so just to keep the connections nice just kind of glued it down um, then I've got the uh, the wires going to the amplifier chip some say you don't have to but I did it's not that expensive uh, you can get these off of eBay for dirt cheap it's a THS7314 chip. This one actually came with the headers attached. Then you have a little capacitor. Um, and then you've got the three 75 ohm resistors that go to, before they go to the output. Um, and this mod, unlike what I I'd, I'd, uh, watched a video and the guy said, oh yeah, once you do this, it disables the... Um, composite out and everything else because you're cutting a trace. This doesn't actually do that. Um, I think that only did it in an older mod where they didn't use the amplifier chip, where they were trying to use a boost off of the board somehow. But this doesn't cut any traces. This doesn't do anything that's going to harm your uh, board. Uh, and, and like I said, and you'll still have composite out if you really want it. Um, but obviously the whole point of this is to have RGB out. So I'll have a list of, you know, where you can get um, this stuff. Um, also, I swapped out the red LED for a little purplish one. That way I know that I've got actually another N64 that is like a wrong serial number. That's why I had to actually go buy another one because uh, that one wouldn't have the chip inside. So this way at least I can discern which one's the RGB modded one. Um, and then the other mod I did was the, if you look here, their way of locking out, so to speak, the uh, Japanese cartridges were to put those uh, little standoffs in here. And you uh, can't see it that way. But anyways, these, these little square notches actually stood up. And when you put the cart in, uh, if they didn't, if the cart is in the right shape, obviously it wouldn't push all the way down and wouldn't make the connection. So that's that's a territorial lockout. It's just some pieces of plastic. Um, very easy to defeat. Just take a router, uh, Dremel and router out. So those are the three mods done to this. And then I'll uh, just going to close it back up, make sure everything's, um, you know, not shorting out. 
<clears throat> put it back together. Oh, and another thing, you're gonna need the, um, the bit to get this open. It's that special Nintendo bit. I had gotten this years ago for something else. Um, but you're gonna need that to get the six screws off the bottom of this. And then once you get to that, you're gonna have to take apart this stuff, which is actually, which will be on this side of the board. Um, and it's kind of ridiculous. Um, I just printed out a copy of the image and then so I could stick the screws in it so that it, <clears throat> can I remember where they all went? Um, yeah, 28, 28 damn screws. So unlike the, uh, I think the Xbox, when you pop it open, I think there's what, like six? So yeah, this is uh, slightly excessive. But uh, yeah, that's, that's, the, uh, that's the mod right there. All right, so I've got it on. Um, got it hooked up to the uh, HDMI, uh, scared the HDMI converter. Um, and I've got one of my favorite games playing, Sin and Punishment. Uh, it's a Japanese game. Obviously, it's working and bypassed the little uh, plastic protection dealy. Um, now, obviously, taking a picture of my screen here isn't going to do much justice. I am going to show... Uh, you can use the same cable for the 60, N64 as you can for the... Super Nintendo, um, and I'm going to show just like the beginning of Super Metroid, just to show you what it does, what the difference actually does look like, because there's a big, big difference on that one. Uh, that's the first one I tried. Uh, again, another one of my favorite games. Um, so that's um, that'll be coming up here in a second. Okay, so here's the beginning of Super Metroid using the composite in on the Super Nintendo. Now if you notice on the, the 1994 Nintendo, it's really fuzzy and, and very cruddy looking. I mean, it's like not sharp at all. It's uh, just very not defined very well. So now I'm going to do the same thing, but we're going to try it with the RGB adapter. And change the input here. Not to that. Okay. Now notice the 1994 Nintendo presents very clear. I said, I mean, I can show you the rest, but uh, they said as far as anything else, like I said, just, just even that little intro with the, the lettering just shows how badly uh, the composite looks compared to the, uh, the RGB input. <laughs> 